Hello and welcome to this invitation-only webcast covering the performance results of software vendors in 2Q12. My name is Allison Crawford and I will be your host for today's session. Our focus is to provide business research to accelerate our customer success and we're going to find new ways to help you maximize the value of your relationship with us. This webinar will provide insights insights into the leaders and laggards in the software industry that will assist you in your strategic planning cycles. This presentation, analyst Elizabeth hedstrom Heinlein and practice director Stuart Williams will demonstrate trends driving the results featured in the software business quarterly report to which you subscribe. This will be a jumping off point for you to ask us additional questions on the trends we're seeing and how this will affect you. We'd like to encourage you to send any questions or comments to the Q&A function or the chat function. I'll put them to Stuart and Elizabeth at the end of the webinar. Or to set up a client inquiry for more detailed discussion, please reach out directly to either Elizabeth or Stuart at the end of the webinar with the CC town executive to set up that discussion. Now let me introduce your speakers, Elizabeth and Stuart. Elizabeth has been working in the enterprise IT space for the last 10 years and is leading TBR's enterprise software coverage. Stuart runs the software practice at TR and is pioneering TBR's new research reports called Source IT that connects sending in the enterprise software stack with IT sourcing decisions across specific customer segments. Now with this, let me hand it over to Stuart and Elizabeth. Stuart? Thank you, Thank you for joining us today. We're going to look today at the key highlights and research outlook that we have based on the vendors that we cover. Jump right into some of the key points that we're going to talk about today. Today. There's a lot of transformation underway uh, in this enterprise software space. And obviously, items like cloud and mobility are top of mind for all of our uh, participants today. So when we look at the performance in the second quarter this year, we saw that uh, there's a continuing transformation of software consumption to end users, and that end enterprise software vendors are holding the line with three key tactics that are enabling them to not only sustain their revenue, but build a bridge uh, across the new consumption models to drive new growth along these lines for the future. The first trend is around the product portfolio, where we see vendors beginning to expand their capabilities attached to these high interest trends, uh, cloud and mobility, BI analytics, VD, and others to be address the requirements that are coming up from the buyers and to be able to also satisfy their install base. Second tactic is around the go-to-market. We see us being able to uh, put new routes to market through new partnerships and make acquisitions to end new spaces and new markets to expand go-to-market routes. And finally, we see corporate reinvention we see is beginning to examine their place in the market space, uh, looking for new leadership and new strategies as they begin to pivot based on the transformation that we see happening in enterprise IT and consumption models to reinvent their business going forward to not retain their current share and business strength, but to grow in a very competitive market. So this presentation is based on the software business quarterly reports. Uh, for those who are uh, regular readers of our reports, you're familiar with the structure of these reports. Uh, each report covers strategy, go-to-market, financial resource management, a line acquisition activity, and includes a forecast and future outlook for each vendor. So in, it is a holistic view into each vendor that looks across their portfolio, looks across their regional performance, their, their uh, their go at their segment performance, to understand what it is that they drive revenue and create profit through the leveraging of their assets. Today, uh, summary report and the highlights are drawn from the following vendor reports as well as from our software vendor benchmark. Okay. And I'm going to uh, invite Elizabeth to uh, and we're going to take a look at the research highlights and the 2012 outlook. Thank you much. Let's get started. As we're looking at the quarter, and our software vendor benchmark for the second quarter is set to publish in the next week, this is, this is a year of, of incremental growth. 
growth. When we're comparing last year's growth to two years, for 212 year to year corporate revenue growth, as you see, fell below 8%. From nearly 18% in 2Q11, and looking at license revenue growth, that was a year-to-year -year drop of less than a uh, year-to-year growth of less than 3%, which fell from um, 18% in 2Q11. We're starting to see vendors making calculated choices, looking to either product or market evolutions, as Stuart pointed out, to hold the line and maintain leading positions despite slow uh, despite slower macroeconomic conditions. Look at the graph in front of you. I'll take a moment to walk you through the axes. This is from our pending uh, 212 software vendor benchmark. Looking at the vertical axis, we're seeing the vendors on a uh, corporate revenue year-to-year -year growth. On the horizontal axis, low revenue growth year to year with the size of the bubble signifying the strength of the vendor's presence in the market. And we we see single digit growth cheating through the balance of the year. Those years out in front, including um, by mean they are outperforming the mean average, which you will see as the green dot lines on both horizontal and vertical axes. Those are the average license revenue growth and average core revenue growth year to year. So Leash of performers, cloud vendors, Salesforce.com, NetSuite, those vendors that are able to counter traditional license revenue models. And so the hold the line theme that we touched on earlier today is where we're starting to see large mainstays like Microsoft, like Oracle, moving like IBM software, taking steps to defend stall bases by evolving their core products to attach to these customers' high interest trends. So, a key call out here, a key call out here as we're waiting for the slide to transition over is even the strongest of licensed revenue performers are starting to lag the growth that are set up by set by the more the more agile cloud vendors. So, for those that are joining us for the first time, what we're what we like to do is highlight both industry trends as well as best practices that we've seen within our covered portfolio of software business quarterly vendor reports, which is up from nine to eleven. Our new additions include Red Hat and SaaS. So within this subset of vendors, BMC Software, Microsoft, Red Hat, and VMware, these are vendors that made the strongest strides in the quarter around their product portfolios, attaining their portfolios to cloud computing, to mobility, to option management is a new trend that we see rising, especially as those capabilities transcend both on and off-premise deployments. So BMC software, they made a stake in the ground at the start of the year to try to take cloud share, and it's working. Their, e their ESM revenue um, is now roughly 25% cloud-driven, and Cloud Lifecycle Manager is not only enjoying enterprise adoption, but BMC software is starting to come up in conversation around cloud appliances. Microsoft. This is going to be a big year with Windows 8, which we'll touch on in a little while, with the pending launch of Office and the ability to take Office to mobile devices. Microsoft is looking to create selling opportunities for its channel, but also give its customers another chance to see Microsoft a little differently as a next generation provider. For that, this is this is an interesting uh, quarter as well. We've really made a step into the cloud, but they're attacking the cloud from a standpoint of we are a trusted advisor. We know how to manage your environment. We know how to manage it from the ground up. Those skills are transferable even when you're looking at off-premise deployments. Cloud Forms promises to do just that, so we'll be watching that very closely in the next little while. Finally, for VMware, VMware's stake in the cloud started the middle of last year. 
and they really they were at the leading edge of, of for man and orchestration of both on and off premise deployments. They attached V fabric attached V fabric to that trend at the tail end of 2011, and are starting to see significant revenue adoption around that, that suite as a solution tie-in. So first, we're going to take you through a few snapshots of the vendors we just talked about. These are highlights from the second quarter reports for each of these vendors, and we'll see the slide for each of the 11 companies that we covered in the court as we move forward through the webinar. And for BMC, they had a difficult 2011. They are really looking to take that take momentum back in 2012. And though it's going to it's it's a long journey. We see them underway. They're making the right acquisitions. They're looking at Numara as a chance to really move their mid-market needle. Their cloud and mobile computing as a tie-in to their core mainframe business, and they're investing in the right functionality within their products to ensure that that is a credible product story that they can take to market. They're they're also looking to take their sales force to the next level where appropriate, but also ensuring that they are really aligned to the right messages to take their take the new BMC story to market even in the face of competitive challenge. I'd like to call out certainly around BMC is the reinvention and, and uh, redistribution uh, of its sales force. Uh, the company faced very significant challenges uh, getting its new young uh, replacement uh, sales teams uh, reintegrated with its uh, remaining existing experience sales force and really making sure that those new uh, account executives are becoming successful as they get on the ground and build relationships with their clients. So one of the key factors in our assessment of BMC going forward is, is how the uh, reinvigorated or reinvested uh, sales force uh, is performing in terms of uh, both bookings and in the, the ultimate revenue and profitability of the company. First off, as we touched on a moment ago, this is this taking 2012 as the year of aiming towards 2015. They're looking at long-term strategies, significant product reinventions, acquisitions designed to expand the of core products against the against an onslaught of pure play cloud, cloud competitors. And I'll note that Microsoft is also a company that we cover within a cloud business quarterly. And my colleague Jillian Morandi, who leads our cloud coverage, will be taking cloud business quarterly subscribers through a similar discussion in about three weeks. Things that we're certainly looking at uh, in terms of Microsoft's performance going forward is the is the is how well Microsoft can successfully uh, patch product family to product family as it has a significant uh, release across its portfolio uh, from the Dynamics area, from the Office suite to uh, Windows 8, product family after product family. There's a broad area here. Uh, and also Microsoft is looking to drive more um, account expansion and business expansion through uh, pay for performance with its partners. Uh, the company is investing some $200 million in driving its cloud business this year. So uh, we're looking at that, looking to the success of that uh, as it begins to really work across its portfolio uh, to drive what are right now uh, very standalone uh, separated businesses that use core, you know, obviously the core same technology. The company that's really capitalizing on initial permission to play. They crossed a billion dollars in their fiscal year 2011, and they are, I say, loud and proud about that fact. But they're also really making a commitment to see not only the course they're on, but accelerate their growth strategy. They are investing aggressively in their sales force. They are investing aggressively in their products, and also investing in an ability to to expand its core story through new acquisitions, particularly the acquisition of Gloucester. The RAT storage portfolio is critical to 
late 2012, early 2013 growth in revenue, and it's a new addressable market for them. So I think a key thing to note there is Hat has thus far proven itself able to retain acquired executives and in, and really engage them in, in Red Hat go to market and the Red Hat evolving strategy. So we that speaks that through the potential that this business has provided that they can keep these executives not only engaged but evolving the Red Hat culture to incorporate these new products. Basically when one of the things that we see Red Hat taking advantage of is the renewed interest in open source from the enterprise. Uh, uh, there are several uh, open source earnings from that help companies manage data, uh, cloud, uh, virtualization, and Red Hat is beginning to really position itself at the juncture of all of these movements uh, as, a, as an open source, a nonpartisan advisor for the enterprise. Uh, we're looking for more uh, systems integration and reseller partners to take a hard look at, at, at and begin to drive that business. Uh, uh, through their own channels uh, by adding, uh, additional packaging implementations or vertical industry expertise around it. So uh, the key drivers that we see going forward, see the risk with uh, with open source always relies on the quality and the global extent of the uh, support system. For this um, set of tactics and best practices, uh, looking at VMware, Lately, has been a company that has reinvented itself almost annually. First, they were the company that was the foundation for cloud, and now they are becoming the company that can manage your cloud, regardless of who that cloud is from or for. We see those products really designed, the, their evolving management and orchestration portfolio really designed to create a ch in other people's footprints, so to speak. With the of Pat Gelsinger as as the new CEO effective September 1st. This also signals a, a bit of a change in traditional rules of engagement between VMware and EMC. So we look to see tight collaboration in the next little while as, they, as, as both companies figure out their new culture between VMware and EMC, though VMware may well pay market penalties in its ecosystem for their collaboration. See uh, VM really be, being a leader in this, this cloud orchestration uh, tied to the virtualization capacity, but they're going to be getting a serious challenge, a run uh, from Microsoft, uh, IBM is coming along. We see other vendors positioning the management portfolio as well as um, these, uh, coming in from outside from the IT service management space, for example, uh, companies like ServiceNow. Uh, being able to talk about doing orchestration. So the ability to differentiate itself and remain a value driver for the enterprise is a key uh, requirement uh, for VMware as they go forward. Uh, and we anticipate them coming up with uh, even another trick as they move their way up the stack uh, away from the hypervisor and towards higher levels of, of business value. So we touched on vendors within both the broader enterprise software landscape that TBR covers in the software vendor benchmark and in greater detail with our uh, current companies. Our vendors are evolving their product portfolios to retain and defend a slower macro economic environment. With, let's take a deeper look at the way vendors are evolving their go-to market strategies. An interesting dichotomy that we see, you know, a relatively even split across our vendors around those that are looking to product and those that are looking to strategy and partnerships and sell evolutions to see ahead of land trends. We see a number of vendors look to alliances, to acquisitions, and to um, and to sit in investments to accelerate their go to the market and keep it of customers change desires for delivery um, for preferred delivery methods by which we're talking any number of things including bring your own device 
and mobility. So let me, let me give you a quick snapshot of what we're looking at here. These are be taken from again our pending um, our pen for vendor benchmark publication, and what you're looking at are geographic splits. So it is America's growth or corporate revenue growth again on the vertical axis, and geographic revenue growth on the horizontal axis for the Americas in the top left, for Asia in the middle right, and for EMEA in the bottom left. And I think the key call out. I would like for you to to note here is the fact that, that and that there are clusters and EMEA continues to be the region of that we're seeing the most significant struggles to date. APAC we saw a lot of our a lot of vendors that we covered, most particularly VMware, looking at the tail end of twenty eleven to really invest and expand their global infrastructure in that region and that's where you see a huge chunk of those vendors plus around the middle axis. Everyone is really getting, everyone is really taking things to the next level. But actually, Amer the Americas region really led in terms of the, the highest edge of leading performers. And we see this really stemming from the fact that in this market have customers that are more mature in terms of these new delivery methods and as such have really evolved their have really all their strategies around how to take incremental share in opportunities while ensuring their own install basis from competitive threat and taking in future cross-selling gains. And Stuart, did you want to add here? Obviously, we see North America as a mature market, um, the macroeconomic headwinds that are facing uh, when Europe, China, and India in specific are, are putting a drag on the businesses of a lot of vendors that are looking to grow uh, in those regions, uh, even you know uh, other high growth regions like Brazil are beginning to slow down a little bit. So the recovery in North America we feel going forward is going to be a mainstay of a lot of the core vendors um, as they begin to uh, optimize uh, the spending that they can capture in areas that are experiencing significant slowdowns. So uh, little headwinds going forward, but it doesn't really change the dynamics of what customers are looking for and what they want to adopt, it re really puts more pressure on uh, IT budgets and uh, heightens the requirement for IT to become more efficient uh, and more effective in helping those businesses uh, that are in these um, regions to, to be more effective at their business development and growth. And just a quick uh, quick note, responding to one of the one of the questions. Forgive me, I meant to also emphasize again that the size of the bubbles on the graph represent the, the relative size of the vendor in the market compared to the others on the on the on the scope. I, it's it speaks to the diversity of the landscape and the diversity of of the ways in which companies are evaluating their own businesses and looking at what to do next that, that you see DA Technologies, Oracle, and SAP on the same page. But really about these vendors are looking to understand where they have gaps and they're able to really invest and look at how to really drive the next step growth. So for CA Technologies, a company that like BMC has struggled in recent quarters and BMC was looking to cloud, C is really looking to innovation. They're taking what they do well with ArcServe and they're looking to really drive growth opportunity through channel and they're looking to development and innovation like Oracle and SAP as well with their centers of excellence and we're taking a very significant enterprise step with their new development centers and Aviv to drive the next big idea. And we see that as very significant for the coming quarters. On SAP, it's about addressable market expansion and how you balance that changing story with your sales force. So Oracle has Oracle. 
both Oracle and SAP had sales executive uh, lead regional sales executive departures in recent weeks and months, and both are rapidly expanding their addressable market, most notably through the SAP acquisition of success factors in that new business, as well as the purchase of Ariba and Oracle's Excel launch of the Oracle Cloud and its surrounding offerings. So we see the, we see the opportunity there as both companies are aggressively investing in sales. I think Oracle has added more than 500 salespeople in the last two quarters, and SAP now has 5,000 total personnel aligned in their cloud business. It's how to take those new, those new opportunities to market while still maintaining their core businesses and not cannibalizing resource allocation. So I, I see technology in BMC again. They seem to almost be point and counterpoint, but here, you know, B, here's where CA has really got a very strong strategy in place to take share, particularly at BMC's expense, because CA is getting close to mainframe business and the strategic expansion of go-to-market. It's a very strong strategy, and it's something that we see delivering delivering returns in the you know in next two to three quarters. Right, and one of the things that we see both firms falling back to uh, is their core mainframe business. So as we see with IBM, uh, the mainframe is, is certainly not dead. We see a, a strong expansion of portfolios across all vendors around mainframe as the need for uh, optimized computing environments, uh, ease of management increase. Uh, the arguments are strong for that. Um, for vendors like CA and BMC that are not manufacturing mainframe hardware, uh, the challenge then is always on patching their uh, services around those mainframe businesses uh, and also tying that mainframe to the distributed systems. And we see challenges for CA uh, and for BMC in the distributed space, more so for uh, for BMC than with, than with CA, which has a, a, a broader uh, portfolio and reach. And I'd also just add briefly that we see a really looking to innovation and alliances, and that is an additional value add to their go-to-market, most notably um, in recent months with VA Ready V Block, and that is definitely a, 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 an innovative step in terms of how you take these traditional CA strengths to market. Uh, Oracle it, challenge there really remains best to take very diverse businesses and take the next step towards taking a, a full solution to market. Engineered systems continues to drive to drive growth within that business, at, though the overall hardware business continues to be impacted by the removal of the lower end business. Oracle is a very new business. Um, software continues to be a stronghold, but that, that remains three distinct businesses with significant integration potential. So with, with the level of sales investment that's happened in recent quarters, the PLEO is there. It's really about taking that next step in market making and gain an investment with customers to t create solutions and take those to market. Google has... Uh uh, make acquisitions in its uh, global business units to uh, drive the solutions business. The company largely and clearly remains focused as a technology provider and relies on its partners to help develop solutions, which it can then market uh, through its alliance program or through its uh, reseller program. The keys here for, for Oracle is it moves uh, to more closely towards solutions um, with integrated systems uh, is to very quick, carefully manage the gap in the white space between where they're going to end their product portfolio and how they enable their partners to add value on top of that. Obviously, Oracle uh, looks at all of the systems that it sells, software and hardware, uh, on initial front as, as, a, as a footprint expansion in many cases and to drive its its core maintenance business. And so that's the that's core that enterprise as long as that business remains solid and growing. We don't anticipate any significant changes in the Oracle business model. And so far, we, as we track the free cash flow, that business 
is very strong. Okay. So, AP has very ambitious addressable market strategies, and they've managed to tie a revenue, a, a revenue related or contribution related goal to almost all of them with 2015 the, as the delivery year. Being said, SAP is is investing in where we see the right places to ensure that they are, are engaging with both direct sales and partners with distinct and delineated opportunities to drive growth across not only SAP's core business but in, in newer businesses like mobility and cloud, cloud most notably with the, with a goal of two billion dollars in revenue for the business by 2015, and that's I think in Elizabeth's opinion, the most ambitious goal that they have. With that said, SA is also really looking to drive engagement with its channel and has committed to, to increase its channel revenue contributions more than 5% between now and 2015. And that's where we see SAP putting a lot of investment in time, where there is both a competitive opportunity and threat because they, they're moving in a direction that promises significant gains, but that require a lot of coordination and orchestration across a rapidly diversifying ecosystem. Yes, uh, Oracle, Microsoft, Infor, Epicor, uh, uh, should be aware of SAP's drive uh, to grow its, to move down market and to grow its channel-driven business. Um, so far, this is still in early days, and previous uh, examples of SAP's uh, efforts to grow this business have, have met with mixed success. Uh, however, the, with the addition of the portfolio, the, the new breadth of the portfolio, and the addition of um, new ones, you know, such as six factors and uh, Reba, you know, the, the opportunity is there uh, for SAP to begin to open up an ecosystem and a network-based uh, approach for to add vendors and to add businesses into uh, its whole ecosystem of customers. So uh, we see challenging. We need to see more uh, evidence uh, on the channel success as it goes forward. That's an area we'll be keeping an eye on. So have looked at product and go to market. We're now looking at corporate reinvention. So if we're looking at, at software vendors holding the line against pure play competition, disruptive competition with three tactics, the first being short term delivering within the next two quarters. The third corporate invention is really how they're taking things to the next level, how they're setting up for 2013. We're starting to see a rise in investments. Look at new new next steps to really put pieces in place now to accelerate year growth trajectories in the next calendar year. So for what we're looking at now, this is the last of the pre coming attractions graphs that we'll give you today. This looks at corporate revenue growth for the for the current vendors in our vendor benchmark on the axis and at corporate operating margin on the horizontal axis. And declines year to year relative to 2000 and calendar year 2011 is the goal. That being said, we're looking at a lot of the mainstay vendors really to say, yes, it's worth it to us to to start eroding a little bit of historical margins, particularly powerhouses like Microsoft and IBM and Oracle, to what they have the, the next steps in place, particularly vendors like Oracle with with its cash position, to to move in the right in the right directions for long term growth. So the we're looking at on this page, one of our new ones as well, SAS. Um, HP, I mean, HP company in reinvention, we're really seeing them taking a hard look at every aspect of their business. And we see the concierge service program as a very, a very innovative way to look at a very deep, very broad ecosystem and really drive new and different levels of engagement. For them, they're, they're looking at... Um, solution centers, and they're looking at solution centers in high growth markets where they already have infrastructure. So putting the putting buy to buy 
opportunities right where the clients are and really making that easier for customers. And for SaaS, SaaS is a unique vendor in our portfolio in that it is dedicated. It is analytics only. That's what they do. That's what they love to do. So it's one of our privately held companies that we cover. But where we see SaaS really look at the long term is first we're first mover analytics long before a lot of our other companies ever thought about it. They're really looking at functionality. They're investing in their products and they're investing in their portfolios so that they stay at the lead of a trend that is only getting hotter by the day in terms of the customers that we talk to. Finally, Symantec, we really as Symantec's line, band. this is their time and we expect to see great things from them in 2013. They're making all the moves that they need to make in terms of executive leadership. They're evaluating everything that they've been doing up till now, and they're unafraid of big decisions to back to basics, and from that strong position, drive growth. But, uh, all of these firms represent uh, good examples of that adage of, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste. Uh, these are these are firms that are uh, looking to uh, take advantage of disruptions in the marketplace and changes in, in uh, their core businesses, uh, either that or leadership changes, uh, to be able to uh, um, and extend their value propositions uh, and their addressable market and their business success. So we're watching, uh, obviously, measuring the performance of all these firms uh, as we go forward. So. I, we're coming up on the top of the hour, so we will touch on these briefly, but if anyone on the phone would like to speak directly with us on these particular four vendors, we're happy to go into greater detail in a follow-on conversation. But for a key, its operating margin and the integrating aspects of its portfolio really began to deliver not only benefits within the division in 2013, but benefits across HP. For likewise, when looking at both HP software and IBM software as divisions side by side, we see them at the leading edge of really taking software as an integrating value add aspect across solutions, services, and really looking at making it valuable for customers. And we see it set to continue to accelerate growth rates for IBM in the coming quarters. You'll note at the bottom of this screen, we see SAS really able to catalyze at a very nuanced level on intelligence and analytics adoption, which as you can see based on our research, is really variant by industry in terms of the maturity of those of those purchasers. And that's something that we can really that we sat in one of the strongest positions available to capitalize on in 2013. And finally, for Symantec, we touched this a moment ago, but we really, the idea for Symantec is to really make a strong, a strong next step, and we see them making all the all of the right strategic evaluation moves to when they make their next major market move, have it be significant, have it be delivering revenue growth, and have it be the right step for the next evolution of semantic as a company. So what we you know as we look ahead to 3Q12, I know I'm already in the thick of 3Q12 as my coverage includes Oracle and Red Hat, both of whom have already released earnings for the quarter. We there's really making very tactical moves designed to close this calendar year out with growth. They're willing to in, they're will, really willing to invest now to ensure that the end of this calendar year is strong for everyone. And we said, uh, despite the headwinds, the vendors that we're tracking uh, will continue to uh, make positions to expand their portfolio. They will be uh, driving the go to market to achieve their uh, revenue goals, and uh, certainly looking to optimize their business performance and strategy. And that ties in very neatly to uh, slide 31, which you're looking at right now. This is a preview of our 3Q12 research agenda, which is, again, as I mentioned, already in flight for the quarter. But it's definitely a continuing story, and it's a story that is speeding up in, um, in terms of how vendors are moving and adapting to trends. Yep. That's certainly, they can package up 
their portfolio to drive data across, we'll be able to see growth uh, in 2012. Finally, to wrap up, thank you, Elizabeth. It's been great. And uh, I'd like to take some, some Q&A. Great. Thanks, Elizabeth. So a few questions come in. I'd like to encourage anyone for the last couple minutes to we'll answer what we can. If we don't get to your question today, we'll be willing to set up additional follow-on conversations. The first question we have is around the VM where Red Hat, to what extent – sorry, just did. little difficulty, sorry, folks. Um, to when our growth declines, market weakness, and which might reflect shifts in technology trends or competitive pressures? So for VMware and Red Hat, both of which fall within my coverage here, I think for them, growth declines are really a sign of, of the company's willingness to invest. Both companies are in a very significant hiring bet right now. Um, actually, in fact, both of them are not only um, expanding their teams, but expanding their facilities. And they have they both admitted that in, in the next two to three quarters, there will continue to be margin erosion. With being said, I, I think that both vendors are in a position to, with it, with an evolving move to cost management, turn that turn those declines around in 2013, because a lot of that investment is centering in research development, personal, and go-to-market teams. So this is really the time to make moves for growth, and I think both companies are doing that right now. Uh, the question that's come in is, what are your thoughts on customer interest on in Windows 8? Well, uh, customer interest in Windows 8 is very high, uh, both from the perspective point of view, meaning it is a very new-looking product, and it, it promises capabilities that haven't been seen uh, in Windows operating systems systems before, uh, it brings with it uh, attached, you know, cloud storage. Uh, it brings with you the ability to more easily migrate content or activity from uh, a laptop or a desktop to mobile devices. Um, these are responses to key market challenges. Uh, now, the transition itself, as companies are ready to make that transition, will not happen all at once. And we see a wave of adoption. Uh, be driven by uh, companies as they stage, and that we think, believe that that cycle will be similar to uh, other, you know, Windows adoption transla transla translations. Um, however, the key difference this time around is in the mobile uh, arena, where we see the ability for Microsoft to drive significant attach of the, uh, of the Windows mobile version of Windows 8 uh, onto the tablets, and we saw some some uh, criticism from Intel. Uh, Paul Odellini yesterday was making some feedback about it not being ready. Uh, that's very strong feedback from a strong market partner. Uh, however, uh, we, we believe that uh, Microsoft will be with, um, with a that is very different, may not be finished, may not have all the bells and whistles and polish on it. Uh, so we believe that there will be strong adoption uh, and really uh, looking for Microsoft to drive, and they, we know that they're taking that very seriously to drive the mobile space. Great. We have a final question. Uh, the one that came in is, taking macroeconomic constraints off the table, what is the primary contributor to big moves within the enterprise software landscape? Primary contributor? The primary driver for that is, do I find my next profitable uh, business? All right. So it's a simple, uh, simple answer. Uh, we senders looking across the space, looking at key areas where people are driving, uh, where customers are driving to adoption. So B and analytics, big answer, you know, how do I manage the data going into that? Mobile, uh, how do I enable mobile customers and mobile uh, commerce? Uh, ability to, to get my own workforce uh, to have more mobility. So uh, the, the traction of this is Going to its ongoing runs a strong driver. Every company that we track interfaces with these tr disruptions in the marketplace differently. So each one of them is looking to capture space uh, or share based on these dis disruptions um, in a different manner. So that that's part of our ongoing coverage. If if you want to uh, make sure you, we get your name, I'd be happy to set up a call. 
uh, afterwards to, to go over our thoughts in, in more detail. Great, thanks. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for your time today and joining us on the webinar. Um, we're going to be doing this every quarter and we really enjoyed the interaction and look forward to the continuing dialogue. As Stuart and Elizabeth mentioned, if there are additional questions, please feel free to reach out to either of them. Stuart's um, email address is here on the slide. Uh, we will be sending out the slides and we have a recording of the webcast in case you want to get access to that, uh, share with additional folks on your team. We're going to leave the chat function open for another few minutes in case there's any last minute questions that you'd like to ask. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you in the next quarter. And a quick preview of coming attractions, as we mentioned earlier, we looked at cloud and mobility today from the perspective of the enterprise software landscape, but with our practice, we're joining the cloud business quarterly subscribers in a number of weeks to look at is transforming the entirety of, of business. So a number of our cloud vendors are covered in that webcast, including ServiceNow, Amazon Web Services, and a number of others. So it, you know, we hope to see you there as well.